What's up, sons? It's Blindrod with Sava Tech once again, and during the Battlefield 5 open beta, I was able to hop in and take a look at some of its performance. We're going to go over that today, specifically taking a look at the advanced settings menu and going through and determining which ones hurt the frame rate the most. Of course, this is without RTX settings because those will be coming later this week. I think it's Friday when we get the RTX 2080. So if you're interested in those, definitely hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down underneath this video as the, my videos haven't been getting out to everyone. And if you're interested, I want to make sure you guys are getting the content. Without further ado, let's get into it. So first things first, the test system is going to be an i3-8350K. We did swap that out for an 8700K here just recently. So some of the benchmarks are a mix of the both. And I wanted to see basically if we had any good core scaling or if we were bottlenecking at all. And luckily on things like the GTX 1066 gig and all the way down through like RX 470s, we didn't see much of a CPU bottleneck there. However, we did start seeing that once we bumped over to like a GTX 1080 Ti, where you're probably gonna wanna have at least at the very minimum an i5 or you know the AMD equivalent there. The game's being run off of a solid state drive to make sure that we don't have any issues with loading in and out textures as the game is pretty hefty with texture qualities. And we also have 16 gigabytes of DDR3 clocked at 3200 megahertz. We did test at 1080p because of course Battlefield 5 is going to be more of a competitive game and you're probably going to want to be playing on a high refresh rate panel and that's probably going to be around 1080p so that seems most reasonable. Now the chart that we're going to be throwing up here is called the change in FPS by setting. So percent change in FPS by setting. If you're taking a look at this then let's go ahead and give you guys a use case. If you were going to be running at 100 FPS right now and you're trying to find a setting to adjust to get you up to 120 FPS for that sweet 120 hertz monitor you just picked up, then you're gonna to want to look for a setting that basically changes your FPS by 20% popping the chart up now. We'll see no change with future frame rendering or undergrowth quality. However, with effects quality, you'll see about a 1.7% change in FPS. And that's gonna be basically within margin of error, so I can't really prove, especially without having a good use case for testing right now, if that actually would change your frame rate at all. Mesh detail, you'll get a 7% change in FPS. Lighting quality, about an 8% change along with terrain quality. The anti-aliasing only has about an 8.3% change in FPS and the ambient occlusion has a 10% change in FPS. Texture filtering has an 11.3% change in FPS and texture quality is another about 11% change in FPS. With post-processing quality taking the big hit here at 17.5% change in FPS. And the worst one overall uh, in my testing was the post-processing quality where you did have 0.1% lows of 17 FPS, which is quite low. So if you're looking for the big culprit right now and you can't find what that is, that setting is definitely hurting performance significantly, especially with those 0.1% lows. Post-processing quality is the biggest tax on the system as of right now of course during the beta. Now a lot of people would argue that you can't really test this until it gets out of beta. This basically in as far as I can tell is a game ready to be released. It's early access to it and they're testing server loads for of course all of the players a lot more than they're testing the actual game design settings, advanced graphics settings and so on. Now none of the RTX settings are currently available in the advanced gra graphic settings menu, but those will become available when they do. We'll test those in a separate video, which I'll be excited about. I hope you guys enjoy this type of content, or at least it helps you guys figure out what the best settings are for your particular game. If there's any tweaks that I can do to make them better or faster or more to the point, let me know. We didn't really go through and test the differences between the individual GPUs at this point because we're kind of sitting in that weird middle ground of I don't know which GPU to tell you to buy. You can check out of course some other PC performance videos on this channel to figure out which 
card you want to pick up if you really need to pick up one right now, but I would wait because I think pricing is going to be dropping here pretty quickly once we get the new cards from NVIDIA, as well as more miners dumping their cards to pick up FPGAs. And if you guys are mining right now, I definitely recommend just holding on to your graphics cards. And that's because I think the flood's probably going to actually specifically hurt you for trying to sell or get rid of any cards you currently have. So hold on to them and stay vigilant on what you're trying to mine. That's a huge tangent. We'll see you guys next Tuesday.